Hello and welcome to part two of this how to build a vocal booth series. If you haven't already, you can always go back and watch part one. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about how to design and build your doors for your vocal booth, how to design your ventilation system so you have fresh air cycling in and out of there, which is super important. And then lastly, talking about some of the electrical and cabling situations for audio and sending electricity in and out of your vocal booth. So I'm going to cover those three topics. I think I'm going to make probably a part three version of this, um, talking about the acoustics of a vocal booth, because it's just so much that goes into designing a vocal booth. Before I jump in, I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. If you're going down this journey of trying to build a vocal booth or a small soundproof room within your home or your backyard or wherever, um, this is gonna be helpful. It's gonna be probably the best resource I can give you that will take you from start to finish of everything you need to think about when building a soundproof room. To watch that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to build a vocal booth part two. All right, first let's just talk about our door design. So when I look at a door design for a vocal booth, I really think of two main options. We either can do the best design option, which is going to be a communicating door, double door system. This is where you have a door on each side of your wall that creates a little air gap and they're both airtight. So this is gonna give us the best possible isolation that we can achieve. The other option, that's going to give us slightly worse isolation but still can achieve the results we want to get would be a single super heavy door that makes up for the weight loss of having two doors. Um, so that's really our decision there and a lot of that's going to come up to the amount of space you have with your door swings. In a vocal booth, if you have a door swinging inward towards the vocal booth, that's going to take up a ton of the space that you have in what's already probably a very small area. So for that reason, you're probably going to end up doing a single door that's really heavy versus having a double door system. Now let's briefly look at communicating doors. So communicating doors, as you can see in this diagram, are two heavy doors totally sealed up with air, the regular acoustic seals that I'd recommend on any door. And then we have the air gap in the middle and we have a superior isolation system because of the two doors that mimic our double wall or a single wall with the hat channels decoupled off of it. Still, you can use double doors for that system as well. The best way to design our doors is going to be figuring out the amount of mass or the weight of each of our doors. That's the most important thing we need to figure out first. So if you're building these doors from scratch, you need to add up the mass of your double wall system or your single wall system, the amount of mass on each sides of that wall, and then put that mass into your doors so that you have a continuous soundproof system. Even when the doorway is there, you're not losing a ton of isolation because of the doorway itself. So to do that, let's take an example. Let's look at a double wall system with two layers of drywall on each side. Now we know one layer of 5 8 inch drywall is 2.2 pounds, so multiply that by two and you get 4.4 pounds for each side of the wall. Now if we're trying to build doors that are equivalent to each side of our wall, we can just take that 4.4 pounds per square foot and multiply that by the square footage of our door. So if we have a typical 36 by 80 inch door, that's gonna come out to 20 square feet total. So if we take 4.4 and multiply it by 20, we're gonna get 88 pounds per square foot. Now that is the minimum threshold that our each door can weigh. So we need two roughly 90 pound doors. Now a single solid core door weighs around 60 pounds, one that you could go down and get at Home Depot or Lowe's or you know your local big hardware store wherever you are. So 60 pounds per square foot is not gonna cut it. So we usually, I usually recommend adding three quarter inch plywood to the back of that door so that it gets up to that 90 per pounds per square foot range and above. With door design, you always want to shoot over the, the minimum weight threshold because you're dealing with a door that's not as soundproof as a solid, clean, perfect wall. We have a door that has, you know, <laughs> it needs seals around it. So the more weight, the better when it comes to door design. Now, if we go back to our single door design, say you need a super heavy single door, 
all we have to do is take that 88 pounds per square foot and multiply it by two and we get the amount that our single door is going to have to weigh. So our single door is going to have to weigh at least 176 pounds per square foot, rounded up to 180, um, and even higher, 200 is even better, like I said before. So when you get to a single door, you can no longer just put three quarter inch plywood. You got to start looking at materials like sheet lead, sheet metal, mass loaded vinyl, thinner materials that have a lot of mass that we can add onto the back of the door to get it heavy enough to provide the amount of isolation that we need. Now, door design is super complicated and I've spent many, many YouTube videos and lessons talking about it. So I'm gonna have a link right here uh, in the video that you can click on to go and check out my, probably my best door video that I've made to date that goes through the entire process of how to build a door. So definitely check that out as a supplement to this lesson right here. All right, let's now talk about ventilation. This is another extremely complex topic that does deserve many, many YouTube videos in and of itself. So I'm also gonna leave a couple of video mentions as well, but I'm gonna give you a general idea of how I would approach a ventilation system specifically for a small room like a vocal booth. Now, the first thing we need to do is think big picture. The design has to have two functions. One, it's going to bring fresh air into our small vocal booth so that we're getting fresh, clean air. And then all the exhalation and the smells and just the nature of a vocal booth in a small room, we need to pull that air out so that we have a continuous air exchange that's constantly going on while we're in the vocal booth. To do this, I recommend using some inline duct fans. We're gonna need one duct fan that's pulling air into the vocal booth and another duct fan that's gonna pull air out. Simple enough, right? Not so fast. The problem is that those duct fans are gonna make noise and noise is gonna easily travel through the ducts themselves into your vocal booth, ruining everything you've spent so much time and money on to create in the first place. So. To keep our isolation intact with our ventilation system, we're gonna need what are called baffle boxes. And baffle boxes are a very important yet sometimes confusing aspect of sound isolation. So in this lesson, I'm gonna go over the general idea of how to build a baffle box. So first, let's talk about the fans. I really like the AC Finity a4 fans for building really any sort of air exchange system. So you might know I'm a fan of what are called energy recovery ventilators um, and also heat recovery ventilators, but that's when you're pulling air from the outside into a soundproof recording studio. In this case, I would recommend pulling air from the room next door into your vocal booth. This way you're pulling the fresh, cool, hot, whatever type of conditioned air you have in the other room and bring it into your vocal booth so that both rooms should roughly be the same temperature, the same humidity, and the same feel. So then the, ex, the stale air actually can go back out to that same room. It's not a big deal because this room is going to be a lot bigger and it's not airtight. So the stale air that's coming out of that room, as long as it's at least six feet from the intake vent, you're going to be okay with not having a lot of crosstalk between the two air flows, meaning we don't want our fresh air mixing with the freshly taken out air, the stale air, and then that's just cycling stale air back into the booth, which totally defeats everything. So that said, I wanted to get the vent fans out of the way first and the general idea. Usually with these AC Finity fans, it's a four inch duct. And so we can use a four inch duct hole in our wall on the outside of the vocal booth, which is nice. But on the inside, we can't use the four inch hole because our airspeed would be too fast making it. So we hear the noise of the air coming in the studio, in the vocal booth, which I'll talk about in a second here. So with our baffle boxes, Basically what we need to do is create a system that makes the duct size bigger than four inches and then also has insulation inside the duct so that when sound travels through our duct, the sound of the fan or the sound of other things on the outside room travels through our duct, it gets absorbed into the insulation and doesn't enter into the vocal booth itself, ruining our vocal recordings. So to do that, we basically need to build a plywood box with 5 8 inch drywall on the outside so that it is really, really heavy and soundproof in and of itself. Then I put insulated ductboard. So this is called ductboard, which is basically an, a specialty HVAC insulation material. And I usually use one and a half to two inches thick ductboard that then lines the entirety of my baffle box system. Now you might be wondering, well, how big do my ducts need to be? And this is a good question. 
So when we go into design our baffle box, one of the best things we can do is use a special calculator called a ductulator. So the ductulator helps me design the size of my ducts to achieve the airspeed inside of the ducts while knowing the cubic feet per minute or CFM of airflow needed to provide adequate ventilation for the person inside the vocal booth. So as a general rule, a person needs 15 CFM of fresh air to have continuous ventilation for a single person. If we have two people, we want to double that to 30 and so forth with more people in this isolated room. So with vocal booths, it's kind of nice because we can actually have a pretty low CFM or cubic feet per minute rate. I usually design vocal booths around 30 CFM just to have enough airflow for one person and then maybe two people at some point or just extra airflow in general, which is not ever a bad thing. So let's say that we're using this ductulator and we have 30 CFM of airflow coming from our fans. And then we wanna design our system to have a maximum of 100 feet per minute of airspeed. So we have cubic airflow in the CFM and then we have speed of that air in a linear distance fashion. So they're, they're re related but not exactly the same thing. So in this ductulator, we can set our maximum to 100. Now, I will say if you're really tight on space, you can push that 100 feet per minute airflow speed up to 500 for recording studio design, but you can't go above 500, otherwise you'll hear the air. I generally like to keep it around 100 just to have like a huge buffer with the airspeed and make sure there's no chance of you hearing any of the sound coming from the air in your vocal booth. So now that we have that, we can look at this ductulator and see in this example that we have a bunch of different sizes. So we've got our eight inch round duct. If we were doing round ducts, that would achieve the airspeed we want. And then we have our rectangular ducts, which is what I usually use for these baffle boxes. So with the baffle box, I'm going to choose the eight by six, but you could also choose different combinations and ratios if you wanted to design something that fit a little bit better for your space. But for simplicity, let's say we take the eight by six duct range, meaning we have an eight inch wide duct and a six inch high duct or vice versa. So as you can see, this is very complex. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but these are the sort of the fundamentals of how I design and think about ventilation systems for any studio, but definitely for vocal booths as well. All right, now let's talk about electrical and cabling in your vocal booth. So it would be great to have this vocal booth, but if we can't run audio or electrical or have lights in it, it's really just a very quiet sealed up box. So we need to run our cabling through the walls. And there's definitely a best practice of how to do this. The only way I really would recommend doing this is by running our electrical and our audio cables through our wall system. And then instead of cutting a typical large hole for our electrical panel or light switches or any of our lighting in the ceiling, I would recommend only sending the electrical wire through the wall. This way you get a very small hole in your wall that you can use acoustic sealant or putty pads around that so that you get an airtight seal around the wire penetrating through the wall. And then you can put your electrical boxes or panels in the acoustic treatment wall. So I'm going to make another video about this, I think, next week. It's just been a long journey of this vocal booth design. But basically, when I design a lot of studios these days, I try to build my acoustic treatment as a separate acoustic wall. And this can be a two by four wall with rock wool in it and then fabric over top of it. And then we can place our electrical switches, our lights, any sort of cabling, any sort of wall mounted boxes in the acoustic wall. So I'll talk about that next time. But for this part, I also want to say that there's a really great resource for you in the United States, and maybe they ship around the world, which is Redco, and they build custom panel boxes for recording studios. And you can actually get a custom made box specifically for your needs, meaning you could have like four XLR inputs, you could have into XLR outputs, you could have TRS cables, you could have HDMI cables, you could have an ethernet, you can have power outlets in the single wall box that's in your acoustic wall and then has a single snake for the audio and then single electrical for the uh, electrical outlets. So this is what I would recommend and what I do for my clients. It makes a really clean and professional look. And then you get a custom box that has everything you need for your vocal booth right there in front of you. And you don't have to worry about running things through the doors or whatever, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing anything else. This is the best way to do it. All right. So in conclusion, when we have our doors, we have two options. We have the communicating door 
or the super heavy door, we need to choose one based on the door swing and the amount of space we have in our vocal booth. Then remember, it's all about mass and weight of those doors, so we want to match the mass of our doors to the mass of our walls. Second, with our ventilation system, we want to think about having inline duct fans that have a low CFM based off 15 CFM per person, and we want to make sure that we run our ducts through a baffle box that specifically will slow down the airspeed so that we don't hear it, as well as absorbing sound through the ductboard insulation. Lastly, when it comes to cabling and electrical, we want to make sure that we use small penetrations through our isolation wall with the drywall and then mount any sort of electrical boxes in our acoustic wall, not the isolation wall. Lastly, check out Redco if you're interested in these custom panels. They're super great and I highly recommend uh, giving it a, a look if you're going down this route. All right, lastly, you might feel overwhelmed by all of this and I don't blame you. It's overwhelming to me sometimes and I do this all the time as my full-time job. So if you're on that uh, journey of building a soundproof vocal booth or even a small soundproof room, uh, reach out with a soundproof clarity call. I actually do these calls with people who are interested in potentially working together. And if you want to, you can just go to the website I have below in the description and sign, the, sign up for the application to see if you're a good fit for a soundproof clarity call. So that's my recommendation. Uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed and tired of DIYing everything, that's what I'd recommend doing. If you're not, if you're excited and loving the DIY attitude, stick around for vocal booth session three on the acoustics, and we'll continue down this journey of designing a super awesome professional vocal booth. All right, I'll see you all next week. See you later. Thank you.